Hello, my name is Deborah. We will be doing a webinar on Navica CMA. The Navica CMA product allows you to enter your subject information, um, create a, a completed CMA with your subject and your comparables side by side with any adjustments you may have made. It'll also give you an overview of the low, high, average, median, and totals of those um, sold properties and come up with a, an average suggested list price of your subject. For the Navica Full CMA, there are two different ways you can start the CMA. This webinar will cover building a CMA from building a CMA. A second webinar will also cover building a CMA from searching. So anywhere you can search in Navica, whether you found your comps and you want to type in the numbers or you put them in a saved listings folder or you just start out by going to the search screen, you can start a CMA that way as well. This particular webinar is only going to cover the building of the CMA from the CMA menu item. So to begin, we will go to CMA on the left-hand menu. Once there, if you had our previous CMA product and had built CMAs, those older CMAs will show at the bottom. For those, you can click on the CMA name to view them or you can delete them. You will have lost any ability to edit existing CMAs as well as using the Add to System feature to submit your subject as an actual listing. However, that will be available on any new CMAs you do in the future but we did archive your older CMAs for you to view and or delete if needed. So when we click on the CMA menu item on the left hand side, we have the main CMA page that's going to have our existing CMAs. And if you have some um, that you've built with a new CMA, you'll have an edit, delete, a clone, and add to system option, which we'll show you at the end. To start a new CMA, you can click on Create CMA. There's a couple of buttons for that. Before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about the CMA settings. There are a couple of things here you can do that are sort of default. Um, you can put in default adjustment values. For example, I can click there. Then it's going to give you a choice to pick your property type. And your board may have different property types. but um, you just click on the property type and then you can put in adjustment values and there's some, you know, pretty much every field is going to be in here. So some of them really don't make a lot of sense like MLS number, but um, all the fields are in here. So if you want to put in and say, for example, a bedroom is worth, I'm just making up numbers, by the way, my adjustment values are not real. Um, you know, you would need to know how much to adjust for a price per square foot or how much to adjust for acreage or how much to adjust for you know anything in your general area. But um, I'll just use bathrooms as an example. I'm just gonna make up a number of say a bathroom is worth $2,000. If I put that in here under my default adjustments and save it, every time I do a CMA, it will make it for residential, which is the property type I'm doing this for, it will um, adjust for bedrooms at $2,000 per bedroom. And you can go through and put those in for features and things like that, but we're not going to, to do the pre-values. Pre That's really something that very few people use. Uh, you know, maybe if you're, you've got a particular couple of neighborhoods and the houses are similar, you can put in these default values. But if you're listing one week, maybe a mobile home over here and the next week, a waterfront property that's you know, completely different type of property, then those adjustment values can fluctuate. So you can put in defaults, it's an option. And if you're not 100% sure, I say don't do it. But um, that is an option here. And if you ever need help with any of that, just contact us at Tech Support. All of our contact information is located under the Help menu item. Now, if you do wanna try to put in adjustments for things called what we call features, so let's look at, for example, basement. If I went in here and said per feature, I would put in say a thousand dollars, and that would be that would mean that dirt had a value of a thousand dollars, finished had a value of a thousand dollars, full has a value, you know. So 
that really doesn't make a lot of sense because dirt is definitely not the same value as finished. Um, so if you say individual, then you would say, what is the value of a dirt floor? What is the value of a finished basement? What is the value of a full basement? And then it would add and subtract those values accordingly based on what your subject has versus your comparables. So um, just like I said, it's not really something you're going to use every day and it's something that very few people will use. So we're just going to basically that's, I'm going to touch on it. It is there. If you have any problems or questions, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to help you. Um, but back to CMA settings, you can edit default search settings. By default, um, what we've done is when I click that, you're going to have things like bedrooms. It's going to be set to find comparables that have one more or equal than one bit than one. So the if your subject has three bedrooms, it's going to give you comps that have three or four bedrooms. So it's either going to be equal, the equal number of bedrooms or plus one. Um, same thing for bathrooms. It's going to give you, if your house has, subject has two, your, when it searches for comps, it'll search for houses with two or three. So if you want it to have, for example, an exact name, match for middle school, then it's only going to find properties that have the same middle school or elementary school that you entered for your subject. So you want to be careful with that. But the only defaults we put in there are equal or one greater bedrooms, equal or one greater bathrooms, equal or one greater acres, and everything else is pretty wide open. You can define your search criteria throughout the CMA. So this is, like I said, these are defaults. This would be every CMA you do these particular search values would apply. So, you know, if you try to say approximate age, exact match, that's going to be, you know, somewhat complicated uh, and narrow down your results to a specific year or a specific range, depending on how your board does that. Um, you could very well find fields like square footage um, and do, you know, plus or minus a thousand. Um, and then say that would only find or 500, whatever, you know, you come up with there. So like approximate finished square feet, I could say um, plus or minus 500. And then it would only search for comps with 500 more or less than my finished square foot on my subject. And like I said, these are your default search values. And once again, it's one of those things you don't ever have to do, but it is an option. And you can also do these within the CMA itself. Um, but I just want to point out that they're all here under CMA settings. You can also go here and build a resume. Um, that will then be included as your, in part of your finished CMA when you do CMA. So when you go to resume, you're going to want to say new resume. And your headings are the sections. So you'll have one called title and objective. But if you don't want it to say that, maybe you want to change this to um, real estate experience and you want to change this to family life and maybe you want to change leave education and maybe you want to put um, organizations and charities charities. Then you can put in whatever labels you want basically is what I'm saying here. And so you can set up your labels and then you type out your resume details over here. Um, the title is pretty much just what you want to call it. it. No one sees that. And so that way you can have five or six and you'll know which is what. Um, Oops. Anyway, you get the gist of it. So fill that out and save it. And I'm just going to put um, I'm just going to put some stuff in here and then save. 
Okay, then you're just, if you want to make it your default, you say set as default, say okay, and then that becomes your default resume, and every time you do a CMA, it's attached to the finished CMA, or you can add it in the add remove pages. And you can have as many of those as you want, but you can only, have, excuse me, you can only have one default. You can change the name of the suggested listed price field. Um, at the end of the CMA, on the finished CMA, there's several places that it's going to come up with your average adjusted price of your comps, and that is going to be labeled suggested list price. Some people don't like that word. They want it to just be called average price. They want it to be called suggested sale price, um, you know, approximate value, whatever you want to call it. If you want to change it a different name, click on change the name and type in whatever you want it to be, and then save it. And then when you get to the finished CMA, it'll say whatever you've changed it to. I'm going to leave mine on suggested list price simply so I can point that out when we get to the end. And there are templates. So when we start this CMA, we won't have any templates. Um, templates are the fields that you want to be in your CMA. So what do you want to enter about your subject and what do you want to see about your comparables? So once you have templates, you can go to template maintenance and build more. Um, you can set your defaults, you can delete them, etc. whatever you need to do, but you'll build it within the CMA the first time and we'll cover that, but you can manage those after the fact uh, under the CMA settings. All right, so we're going to move on now to create CMA. So if you wanted to build a CMA from the build CMA function, you're going to go here and click on create CMA. You're going to give it a name, and this is just so you'll know how to find it in your list of CMAs. So I'm going to call it um, one, two, three. Actually, I've got a better a real address, one nine zero oh, four. Oops, my cat. Nine zero oh, four. Okay, and then who are you preparing it for? This will go on the cover page. So, so put their name in. Who is it prepared by? If you're doing it, you know, as yourself, leave that. If you need to pick someone else in your office, maybe you're an assistant or uh, doing it for another realtor in your office, you can choose from the drop down there. Do you want to add a subject? If you do not want to add a subject, you would say no. Most of the time you do want to add a subject, so um, leave that on yes. If your subject property is listed in the MLS or has ever been listed, it's an old sold listing or an old expired listing or even an active listing, just type the MLS number here in and it'll auto fill in all of the subject data and all of the um, address and everything for that particular address but we're going to type in our address. Actually, I'm just going to copy that street address right here. So put in your subject property address, the street number, the city, the state, and the zip code. Okay. Because you are putting in your address of your subject property here, we can ask you, do you want to apply a radius? Do you only want us to search for comps within so many miles of your subject property? I'm going to say, sure, let's go with five miles. Um, these are the radius options in the CMA. You can always go to search and do a map search for more radius options and then start the CMA that way. But we lim they are more limited here, but you've got one mile, two miles, five miles, 10 miles, 15, or no radius at all. And we're gonna go ahead and say next. Okay, so here's the page where we've got a couple things going on. This is where we're gonna enter our subject property details. But remember, I told you before, you've gotta build a template the first time. So first we want to add our subject photo. So click here to browse or drag and drop your photo into that box. And I'm just going to choose one of these here. And we're going to say, oops, clicked it way too many times and I clicked the wrong button. So let's try that one more time. Sorry about that. I got click happy. Where did it go? There. Uh, 
Okay, so click the photo and then say open. Don't know what I've done there. I've done it too many times. We'll add the photo at the end. That's not a problem. So we want to add edit fields. So we want to add some fields here. So we're going to say add edit fields. And now we're, what we're doing is we're building our first template because the only fields in there are bedrooms, bathrooms, and acreage. Okay, so every field available is on this left-hand side, but you don't need every field in your CMA. Your subject doesn't even have a list price. I mean, you can put it in there and then you'll see it about your comps, but it's going to be in there anyway. So um, street number, we've already entered that about our subject and it's going to show for our comps. So you really don't have to pick any directional fields. If you absolutely want to, you can. Um, I don't care who the listing office and agent were on my comparables and my subject isn't listed, so I don't have that. Property type, that may or may not matter. Dates, I'm not too concerned about. Um, if it's a lease property, of course, I would want lease price, but this particular one is not. Uh, so I've got all my address I've already entered, so I'm going to skip all that. Maybe I want the area. So you're just going to drag and drop the field you want to the right. So maybe I want my um, school districts. So I'm just dragging and dropping and waterfront. Just get I'm getting them over there, then I'll worry about the order later. It's not a mobile home, so I don't need any of that information. And your fields in your MLS may be a little different too. So you may see things I'm using. You're like, we don't have that. That's okay. Whatever you have is what you'll see. This is just um, a generic um, site for, for training purposes. So we want the age and the roof age and the HVAC age. And we want our square foot fields. So I'm just dragging them over there and dropping them, drag and drop. That's all I'm doing right now. I don't care about garage dimensions, but you get the gist of it. So we're just going to go through, let's get down here to our features, or like our air conditioning, our appliances, our basement, our carport, our exterior you know, garage, heating, whatever, like I said, whatever fields you want to be part of your CMA, meaning what do you want to enter data for on your subject and see about your comp. So I've done that. I've put all my fields over there. I can put them in whatever order I want. So I've got bedrooms, bathrooms, acres, list price. I want the list price up there. I want half baths up here. And I want acreage range right there with acreage. So just drag them and drop them to the order you want. And once everything's like you want it, you're going to say save as template. I'm going to name this one residential. And I'm going to say set as default and save. So now the next time I come to do a CMA, these fields will already be there. So you only have to do this once unless you want to change it. You can click on add edit fields at any point in this CMA or futures, add more fields, change them, do save as template again, create another template. Once you get multiples, they'll be in the toggle there to choose from. Or you can just add fields and say use these fields to put things in one time and then the next time they won't be there because they're not in your template, you just added them to that CMA. So it's very um, interactive, it's just that one time, the first step for each property type, you have to build this template. So let's go ahead and put that subject photo. That should work for me now. So let's go open. All right, so we choose the photo, then we say upload subject photo. And like I said, if you forget or you can't, you know, have a problem, you don't have the photo yet, you can add this at the end, but we've got it in here now, so we're good. All right, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to go through and enter the information about my subject. So my subject has three bedrooms. My subject has, actually my subject has four bedrooms. It has two full baths, one half bath. It has one acre. The acreage range is one to 2.9. It's in a particular area. I'm just picking some random schools here. It is not waterfront, it is not distressed, it is not short sale, it was built in 2010. Approximate age is nine, roof age is nine, everything's nine, nine, nine. Upper square foot is 
1,000. Main square foot is 2,000. Basement square foot is 500. Finished basement square foot is 500. Unfinished square foot is 30. And approximate finished square feet is 3,500. There are two fireplaces and central electric. So you get the gist. I'm putting in here what my subject has um, and the facts about my subject. So that's all I'm, I want to put here. Don't worry about searching and whatever. You know, it's like that. that's later. This is just my subject data. Um, the only thing that's going to be applied is the um, equal or greater one greater bedrooms, equal or one greater baths, and the acreage. So in any other default searches criteria you put in, and that's here if you wanted to edit that. And uh, you could go back to the setup if you wanted to, but and you can add edit your templates. But we're just, we filled in our subject, we're ready to go, we're going to continue. This brings up what we call, I call the mini search screen. Okay, it's going to apply a date range of two years back. It's looking for closed properties, four to five bedrooms, two to three baths, zero to two acres. I can put whatever else I want in here, five mile radius, because right now I have 156 results. If I wanted to go to the full search screen, I could say select additional comp criteria. If I had done a search before I ever got started and put some listings in a saved listings folder, I could say add saved listings. If I have MLS number of a comp or two I want to type in, I can click on add comps by MLS number. But if I don't have any of those things, this is what I'm doing using to search. So right now I've got 156 results that are within a five mile radius, sold in two years, four to five bedrooms, two to three, blah, blah, blah. So maybe I want to add approximate finished square foot. I want to do 2,800 to 4,000 and apply. So then that would that would apply that field and then my results there would probably change. So maybe I want to do year built. Um, Let's see, let's, the oldest we want is 1999 and apply. So that's going to do 1999 and newer. So that narrows it on down to 26. So we're going to go ahead and say get results. Okay, so now I have 26 properties. Um, they're going to be sorted by the newest sales to the oldest sales, and this is not the newest data, so uh, disregard some of these dates here. Um, so now I'm just going to go through and I can click on them to look at it. I can look at the pictures. I can see the history. I can see where it is on a map, but I'm just sort of going to randomly check a couple here. And you could have, you know, put in other statuses. I could have clicked on that previous page on my status choices and added active or expires or withdrawals. If I wanted to use other statuses, I'm just going to throw these. I know they're a little off, but we're going to throw those in there. All right, so once you choose your comparables, you're going to say use selected listings. Okay, this brings us to our view and adjust page. A lot going on here, so let's talk about it. If you look at your subject and realize something's wrong or you want to edit something, you can say add edit subject data. And that's going to bring up where you've already filled in your information, but allow you to change anything you might have already entered about your subject. You can add view non-MLS listings. So if you have a comparable that did not sell within your MLS, it sold like a for sale by owner, and you need to add it to the CMA, just click on add view non-MLS listing. And then say add new non-MLS listing. And then you would put in, you know, how much did they have it listed for? How many bedrooms did it have? How many bathrooms did it have? How many half baths? You'll just fill in the info. You would need to know the information about that property. But um, you could go through and fill as much of that in as you have um, to use that particular comparable. Let's 
So I'm just going to sort of stop there. Let's get down here. Let's do the street number for that one. It was one, two, three. Just pick a street here at random. All right. And then we would need to put in how much it's sold for. And when was it the closing date? Okay. So then once I submit that, that adds that non-MLS listing as one of my comparables. So my suggested list price here is the average of all of these sold prices because I haven't made any adjustments. And I can add a photo for that non-MLS listing if I wanted to right here, add non-MLS photo. If I had listings that were not sold, such as actives, expireds, with drones in my CMA, I can check to only include the sold prices in the average, which is the suggested list price. So you can include them or not include them in the average. That's up to you. But just note, if you have multiple statuses and only want the sold ones, there is an option to check for that. <coughs> Excuse me. If you need to search for more comps, you can do that here. If there's a field you need in the CMA you forgot to add, you can do that here. If you click the ETS, you can throw out a comparable. And if you need to get it back, there's an undo. You can only do that once. If you delete this one, then delete this one, you're not going to get three back, but you can get two back. You can edit those default adjustments again, and you can change the order of your comparables. So if you want them in a particular order, you can do that. But we're going to now just talk about adjustments. <laughs> Excuse me. There are three ways to make adjustments. First is an overall adjustment. So let me click that. Number fields, things like bedrooms, bathrooms, acres, year built, square footage, those are number fields, meaning they're, whenever someone adds a listing, they can only put a number in. So we can say a bedroom is worth $500, and I'm making these numbers up. Um, we can say a bathroom is worth $1,000. We can say a square finished square foot is worth $95. And like I said, I'm making these numbers up. You would need to know how much the adjustment values are for your particular properties in your area. But what we want here is a dollar value for adjustments, such as price per square foot. What so many people do is they click on the overall adjustments, and for bedrooms, they put in four full baths two, half baths one, square foot 3,500. Well, you've just adjusted at $3,500 per square foot. So all of a sudden your single wide mobile home is going to be worth $2.7 million. So um, we're looking for a price per adjustment value. So once I submit that, it's going to refresh and it's going to do the math. I set a bathroom was worth a thousand dollars. My subject has two. My comparable has three. So it subtracted a thousand dollars because it, I told him a bathroom was worth a thousand. This one has more than my subject. So it's going to decrease the value. I did that first approximate finished square foot. So this particular comp has more. So it took the difference, multiplied it by my value, and subtracted. This one has less. So it took the difference, multiplied it by my value, and added. So you get the gist there. Um, I should probably go into edit this non-MLS listing and put in approximate finished square foot for that property because I noticed it did not adjust for that one. So just go in and add that and then submit. There was another button down there. I just didn't see it. Um, so then it would adjust that comparable as well. So that's one way to make an adjustment. The next way is on each individual comp, you can go through and click on a single field. So I could click on, um, for example, no basement. And I want to add a value because my subject has a basement. So I need to add something to this one. So I'm just going to say 10,000. Submit. I'm making this up. Um, so you can click on any single item on any single comp and put in a value there. Or on that comp, you can say, and this is the same thing I just did, just 
on one screen. I can say a values for comp one and put values on any single fields. So these are features, etc. I prefer to do that type of thing just by looking across and saying, okay, this one, I need to do something. So I could click on the field name right there and type in my value. The third way is on each comparable, there is a miscellaneous adjustment. You can type in a description. So um, so that one's near the interstate. So it should have sold for a little more. I'm going to say that was probably $5,000 because it's sitting right there and it's very loud. Um, so that'll show with whatever you typed in as your description and your dollar amount. So every time you make an adjustment, you're changing your, your adjusted price, which in turn changes your suggested list price because the suggested list price is the average of those adjusted prices. You can add comments to particular comparables and those will show on the finished CMA. So you can say add comment, and they'll show on the finished CMA as well. Okay, so once I'm done on this page, which I think I've done everything I wanna do, I'm going to complete my CMA. So when we get to our finished CMA, this is what it looks like by default. So you're gonna have your cover page. It's got your prepared for, prepared by, the date. This is my office logo my subject photo, my agent photo, my contact information, my resume, my subject property information. So it's got my subject photo, my subject address, all the details about my subject. Here are the stats on the sold comparables I have used, my low, high, average, um, list price, sold price, price per square foot, etc. My a breakdown of my subject, and this is where we use start using the term suggested list price that you can change. So we've got our address, our city, our square foot, our list price, and our price per square foot. Then we get all of our comparables, and if we had different statuses, they would all be grouped together. Then you get a data sheet for each each comp. And this is where those agent comments show up. So it'll tell you the address, the property type, the status, the sold price, any comments, the remarks from the listing, and then the, um, the listing data. And it does that for each comparable. Some people do not like that. You can remove those pages and I'll show you in just a moment. They just say it's too many pages. Um, some people really like it. So it's uh, just a personal preference. Okay, then we go on down to what we call our side-by-side -side comparison, where we get our suggested list price, the subject data, your comparables, any adjustments, the percent that you've changed the price with those adjustments, um, on down the rest of my comparables, and the last two, or the last one there. We get a bar chart, we get a, um, things you can, you know, do to help your home sell faster type thing. And there's other pages we can add to this CMA and pages we can remove. So let's talk, let's go through the banner here at the top real quick. You can go back to the view and adjust page if you need to change some adjustments or anything. You can add, edit custom remarks and these will show at the top. So anything like that you want to add? So when I add
add those custom remarks, it's going to refresh, and that's just going to go on the cover page. So it's going to have a like a little header and whatever you put down below. So if you ever want to sort of make that cover page, you know, pop with a personal message, that's what that will do. Um, you can add view non-MLS listings again from here. If you decide you need to throw in another comp or something, you can search for more comps. You can add or remove fields. Add remove pages. Let's click that one. So I want my cover page. I want my resume. I want my subject. Um, what's the seller's proceeds? I'm going to check it. Then I'm going to click edit. Ah, this is another page. I can put in their existing mortgage. So they owe 75000 They don't have any equity lines. The taxes are around 3500 a year. Commission will be 3% to each broker. They've got to pay for deed prep in my area. And whatever else, you know, the seller's going to be paying out at closing. You can fill that out. And that was under Add Remove Pages. And that was called the Proceeds. And we'll look at that in just a moment. We've got our side-by-side -side comparison. We want that. I want that map. I want the bar chart. I want the graph. I don't want those individual comp pages. That's the one that takes up a lot of pages. Um, so you can add or remove pages here, and there's one, a couple you can customize, like the seller's proceeds, and then let's save that. Okay, so let me show you what I've done. Um, still got my resume, got my subject property, Got my sold stats. Here's that seller's proceeds details. This is a new page I just added. Um, it's got my subject data. It's going to tell me the suggested list price, at the, what we came up with on our CMA, what they have to pay out at closing, and then if they get a 92% offer, here's how much the offer would be, and here's how much they would net at closing. And we do that for 92, 94, 96, 98, and 100% offers. Then the side-by-side, -side, still, that's the same. We've got a map now that shows where the properties are on a map. And you can zoom that in or out as it, however you want it to be. And then you've got the comparable bar chart and then a graph. So you can, you know, add as many of these pages as you want um, just by clicking on the Add, Remove Pages. You can edit your subject data. You can add your subject photo, you can print it, save it as a PDF, or email your finished CMA. Now, throughout this CMA, it's been saving. So within Navica, it's finished, it's saved, it's there. Anytime I want to come look at it, I can click on the blue name to bring up the CMA. I can go over here and edit the CMA um, to pick up where I left off. If I stopped in the middle or if I just need to tweak something, I can delete it. I can clone it and then clone the subject and do another CMA, you know, with different comps or whatever. I can add it to the system, and that's going to bring up an input screen with everything I filled out when adding my subject, but I simply finish filling it out, and then I can submit it as an actual listing or save it as a partial to find it in my partial inventory. So the majority of that data will carry over, and then you just finish filling it out and you're ready to submit it. So it just saves you from filling all that stuff out again. Um, there's a button for agent notes, and those are those notes that I put in on that um, CMA as well. Okay, so that's pretty much going to conclude the how to build a CMA from the build uh, webinar. Like I said, there will be another webinar posted under the help Navica webinar tutorials for building a CMA from search results. Thank you and have a wonderful day.